PowerPoint Lesson 1. In this PowerPoint lesson, we'll go over Save As versus Save, PowerPoint Ribbon, Slide Master, Fixed Date, Themes, Variants, Different Slide Types with Font Changes, Table, Inserting Data into that Table, Inserting a Picture, Animation, and Annotation. Let's get started. When you open PowerPoint, one of the first things you want to do is name your PowerPoint. Save As feature makes a name for your PowerPoint and places it on your computer. I'm going to save as this PowerPoint onto my desktop, and I called it PowerPoint Lesson 1, but this is PowerPoint Lesson 1 with voice, and I made it a PowerPoint presentation. There's all sorts of different types I can save my PowerPoint as, but today we're going to save as a presentation. I'm going to go onto my computer desktop and I'm going to click Save. I've done the File Save As feature and now it has my name at the top, PowerPoint Lesson 1 Voice. Any more work I do on this PowerPoint, I need to just save. You can click the blue little floppy disk in the top left hand corner. You can go Control Key plus S or you can go File Save. I suggest saving frequently in PowerPoint. You're working with pictures, movement, animations, videos and more, and maybe even sound. Making, doing lots of saves is a good idea. Let's get started on the PowerPoint ribbon. Okay, we are on the home file now. The PowerPoint ribbon is similar to other office ribbons. It has your file that'll lead you to save as in your properties, but you also have your home that has your clipboard for copying and pasting, how to insert a new slide, how to work with your fonts right here in the font dialog box, paragraph spacing, drawing, and more. And that's just the first tab. Insert allows you to place things into the slide. It could be shapes, smart art, pictures, and more. Design lets you give your PowerPoint specific types of color themes, backgrounds, variants, Transitions let things on your slide move, which can be a lot of fun. Wow. And Slideshow lets you use your slide as a presentation from the beginning or from the current slide. This is a speaker's view. It shows the master slide and what's coming up next. Your audience will only see the slide on the left. The next tab is Review, it allows you to check for spelling, grammar, translate to other languages, make marking or link notes, or even add comments. And View enables you to see the different presentations in PowerPoint. The normal view gives you your thumbnails on the left with your main slide on the right. An outline view gives you text on the left with your slide on the right. Slide sorter lets you see a whole pr slide presentation and move it around. A notes page allows you to see one slide and make notes for a presentation. And reading view allows you to go through as if you were reading the slide. So sl slideshow and view are important. You can have rulers, grids, guides, and more. And even zoom in and zoom out and change color schemes. Let's go back to the Home tab. And now we're in the view of the Layout view and we're going to Home and we're going back to that original first slide that we were at. We've discussed how to save and save as and the PowerPoint ribbon. The PowerPoint ribbon was our top up here with our tabs and our different components that work with us in PowerPoint. These tabs and these panels, like Proofing Panel and Comments Panel, enable you to make changes, edits, and designs in PowerPoint and are very similar to other Office softwares, such as Excel and Word. Let's get started on our next topic, which is the Slide Master. A Slide Master is under the View column. So we come back over here at view and remember we're in the normal layout now with where we have thumbnails on the left 
and our PowerPoint slide on the right. Over here in Master Views, Master View lets you control the entire look of the whole PowerPoint presentation. So one of the things we're asked to do as we work through this chapter is to insert a footer. So I would remind myself that this was my PowerPoint lesson one and that this lesson one also had a voiceover. So I knew that. Over here on the right, I could number which slide I was at or I might even give myself credit for doing this slide presentation. And over here on the left is date and time. I'm gonna highlight that date and time and go to my menu and go to insert and come over here to date and time. I'm in the text panel and over here in date and time, it'll tell me which format I want to use. Say I want to have the day of the week, Sunday, and the month and the date and the year. I could choose that form and click OK. However, if I wanted this to update every time, like when I open the slide tomorrow, for it to update automatically, I would click this. But if I wanted a specific date, then I wouldn't click update automatic. I would just leave my date like it was, and maybe I was looking to put my birth date. That might be. That might be a better way to get a fixed date in there. And then of course, save. We're gonna go back to view and we're gonna go back to normal. And now we're going to click our fixed date right here. Remember how to do it? We were in insert, date and time, and we had the pop-up window. We chose what date format we wanted and then we put it there and we can we can change that date and since we didn't say update automatically it will stay the same so I can go January all right and it would stay that month and that date no matter how many times we change this slideshow let's move on to the design and theme all right when we're back at the home menu we can change the look and the feel of these PowerPoints through design. We come over to our fourth tab, and for example, we can have a design with a variant, a, a pattern background, a design with a colored background. I kind of like the purple. Um, there's designs with all sorts of different background. Notice how, as I click my mouse over, that retrospect word appears. That's the name of that theme. Let's look and see what else we have. Over here, we have the badge theme. And over here, we have Vapor Trail. And of course, you can browse the internet for more themes. So, there's a theme that has feathers in the background. Let's give that a try. When we do that, our variants come over here and give us even more choices and we can change the background variant and we can change the background style to a darker or lighter color depending on our pre preference. And then it applies to all. Let's save. Oh, but we missed the bubble theme. That's even better kind of like that, especially since we're dealing with some pets in this PowerPoint presentation. Let's save and move forward. Now we want to insert a new slide and make a table with a caption. When we go back to our home tab and move over, we can see how we can insert a new slide in the second, in the second section. We click on the little arrow and it gives us choices of a title slide, title with content, comparison, picture, quote with caption, three columns, and a lot more. We're going to do content with caption, but I want you to see that over here on the right, we can insert a table, we can insert a chart, insert SmartArt, 
videos from the web, online pictures, and regular pictures, and more. What's important to note is that when you click the icon inside a framed area like this, it will make that fit into the framed area. So we're going to insert a table right here, and we're going to give ourselves four columns, and we're going to give ourselves eight rows. And when we do that, it clicks right in here in the preset size, and we can enter our data for our columns here, and we can enter our data for our rows here. Rows go across and columns go down. And that fits nicely onto our slide. Let's go back, and just so you know, there's also themes for those as well. The green looks nice. Let's go back to Save, and we're going to go back to Home, and then we're going to click on Down. Insert a new slide and insert a picture and resize that picture. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit the Insert tab and go back to the Home tab. I'm sorry. Where are we at? Right here. New slide and we want to be able to grab a picture. So we're going to go picture with caption. And remember, it gives us a little icon to go grab pictures. So when we browse, it will show us picture files. I'm actually going to go to the desktop into pets because I already have a picture waiting for us. Here we go. Let's insert the turtle. We have a picture of Mufasa the turtle and it goes right in here, right inside our box that we had preset. We have a title already ready for us, but we can also go to the Home tab. We can change our fonts. We can change our sizes. But what do we do if we wanted 38 size and we have a 36 and a 40? How do we take care of that? We can click in our font size, highlight it, and go ahead and type that 38 and press enter and it makes us a 38 font size. We can bold it. We can italicize it. We can underline it. And we can even change the color and of course save. Now we need to figure out how to place a picture, but place it with a ruler. I'm going to go back to our picture here and go into View, and then I'm going to click Rulers, and that gives us a ruler at the top of our slide and a ruler at the side of our slide. If we click on the picture, you can see a small little red line that is right between 2 and 3 up at top. And so we're going to go right in between two and three, and then there's a small red line on the left, and we're going to go right between zero and two and place that at one. And so we have a top measurement of two and a half and a side measurement right there of zero. Perfect. We want to save. Now we're going to work on some animation. Let's try the grow and turn. We can click on this picture and we can go back to our home and then move ourselves over to the sixth tab called animation. And here we want to make this picture grow and turn. So we're going to click. There's all sorts of animation choices, but we're going to click our picture and click on grow and turn and the picture flips in for us and seems to grow. We can make that happen on a mouse click with a previous slide change or after a mouse click or another animation. There's all sorts of timing choices as well. This is a great place to explore, but after you've gotten your text in your presentation. We're going to save. See that grow and turn one more time. Perfect. All right, 
We feel like we've got our presentation ready. We're going to go back to the first slide and we're going to, oh, when we changed our template, look at that, it also changed where our title was. Kind of made that graphic off. So you always need to preview some of the changes you made. We're going to go to slideshow and watch our presentation from the beginning. Here we're in presentation mode. You can preview a slide that's coming to your right. Maybe you had some notes. And here's the slide that the audience would see if you were using a projector. And you can use your arrow keys or you can use your enter button or your mouse click to move on through the PowerPoint presentation. Say we got down to a part and we wanted to make this part important and we wanted to point it out to our audience and make sure that they knew what we were talking about. One way is to use annotation. Annotation enables you to underline an active component in a slideshow presentation. Let's give that a try. Let's make sure everybody knows that coin number 10 was the best one. So we're going to click our pen and laser. We're going to choose pen and then we're going to circle around Koi and Tin so everyone knows that's what we want to keep. When we hit Escape twice, we have a pop-up window that asks us, do you want to keep your annotations for the future? Sure we do. Say Keep, and of course you want to save. Thanks for being part of the PowerPoint One lesson.